Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, specifically our House Longspear custom house playthrough. Now when we left off last time we had just taken the Lordship of Antlers for ourselves, so if you haven't been watching the series so far, if you're new to this series, basically our ambition at the moment is to try and take uh, the High Lordship of Duskendale for ourselves. So to do that we're looking to take uh, Birchall, Antlers and Brindlewood, then try and take Hollard Hall and Duskendale and become High Lord ourselves. As well as that, we also had two children, so our, our dynasty is starting to come together. We are still waiting to have a son, which hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see whether we can manage that this episode. I'm hoping we can. It would be nice to get that, because then we can train him up, hopefully to be a formidable fighter, just like ourselves. We do actually have the claim on Birch Hall ready to go, but unfortunately uh, he has slightly more men than me, so I don't want to risk losing the war. So I'm going to leave it a little bit of time and let kind of everything build back up so our troops will reinforce. We have a lot of troops left. We can have up to 2,000 troops from Brindlewood, but at the moment we only have just over 1,000. So, kind of hoping we can slowly build up, because we were besieged quite a few times during the War for the Iron Throne, uh, which uh, Robert managed to win. Obviously, I th it was the War of the Usurper, Robert's Rebellion. He managed to win, but unfortunately we were besieged several times. So we are slowly rebuilding our forces at the moment, so we can have a good shot at taking Birch Hall. Just as I was talking about him, His Grace King Robert has taken his last breath. May he re uh, repose in peace. Now his heir, Lord Paramount Stannis Baratheon, will take the throne. There we go. Stannis the Manis back on the throne. Stannis the Just, actually, apparently. Um, obviously got a very dip different reputation in the game. Uh, his heir at the moment is Prince Stefan, his son to Queen Tita Frey. Uh, long live the king. Stannis Baratheon is now the king. So, fortunately, Renly isn't going to be able to do anything at the moment. Just, of course, Renly still has that claim. He's not even Lord of the Stormlands at the moment. He doesn't really have anything, so... Huh. And Stannis does actually have the Stormlands as well, I believe. Yeah, he has the Stormlands and the Iron Throne. Uh, Lord Xander Longspear, I hereby invite you to participate in the tourney of Rook's Rest, where the knights residing near Rook's Rest shall test their mettle. A chance to prove my worth. Let's go take part in the tournament. Um, if you haven't watched any of my series before, I do skip over the tournaments quite quickly, because they can become very repetitive to go through. I'll read this first bit though. After arriving in Rook's Rest, the first day of the tourney began in earnest. You tilted against many lesser knights throughout the day, most of whom you unhorsed easily. Now in the coming days, the final round of lists begins, and the opposition shall surely be more fierce. I shall ready my horse. So we're do you, uh, jousting against Sir Stefan. He's got a terrible dual skill. Doesn't always mean we're guaranteed victory. It is very random with uh, jousting. More so than sort of Battlefield duels or du uh, just general uh, general duels, they are a lot more random. So we're now facing Sir Jamos, not a named knight, just a knight. Again, dual skill of four, so we should be able to win this easily. We managed to get the hit. Can we knock him off? We did knock him off the first time, so let's go again. Managed to hit him a second time. Still haven't managed to knock him off. This may take a while. Uh, we'll hit him the third time, though. Surely this is going to be it. Yes, okay, there we go. So, falls from his horse, and we go through to the next round where we fight Sir Rickard Fell. So actually, the first sort of named knight or a lord uh, is a lot... Okay, from down in Fellwood there. So hopefully we can beat him as well. He did have a dual skill of eight, and he hasn't managed to get the first hit. He's also strong, and he knocked us off. And you can see what I mean by random. He's got a dual skill of eight, and he is strong, but we have a dual skill of 21.5. So in any other sort of duel, I think we'd easily win that, but because it's a joust, it does get a bit random sometimes. So... Unfortunately, we didn't manage to win, but we gained a little bit of prestige from that, anyway. And it's not really our main goal at the moment to try and gain success in tournaments. Our main goal is to take um, Antlers, uh, to take uh, Birch Hall, sorry. While searching for a lost chalice, I came upon a band of rogues who robbed me. There were too many. Pretty sure I could fight them off, but we'll accept it anyway. Marshal Sir Cavan told me about his ideas. I couldn't really understand what he was talking about, but he was adamant in his belief in proof the military, so we can adopt his ideas or say it's not worth it. We're going to adopt his ideas to get a bit more uh, levies in. So we can now raise 2,205 levies. Um, I just want to get to a point where we comfortably outnumber his forces, so it's not going to be a difficult thing to do. Then we need to get a claim on Hollard Hall, and then Duskendale will be easy to take once he's lost all his vassals. I've invited people in my court to take part in a war game in which we practice defending our land from invading enemies. We will use wooden models to represent invading armies, and I shall have to use clever tactics to defeat my opponent. Uh, this will be fun. 
As we sign test for the war game, we decide that Rickard will defend with me, while Tymon will be leading the invading forces. We're against Master Tymon of Pausin, our Castellan. So, let's see if we can win this. At the beginning of the war game, the enemy quickly tries to advance up the hills in the area to get a strategical advantage. So we can either bring all our forces up to the defensive grounds, or rush forward with a light skirmish force. Uh, I'll send all the forces up to not leave any of them sort of trapped on their own. The enemy ascends the hill quickly alongside our troops. As we reach the top of the hill simultaneously, our armies clash in an outright brawl. Ricard suggests that we spread our tired troops evenly on the field. I think I will do that. Spread the heavy and light troops evenly along the line. So, even though they're tired, they're all helping each other. And we did manage to win the game. So we gain Adept and Strategy, which gives us Marshal and Stewardship, and some Prestige. So, our Marshal at 24, our Stewardship at 8. Not too bad at all. Uh, Stannis has colonised Old Stones. I think that's, yeah, Old Stones... Is there it is? He's in the uh, in the trident. Uh, it's time for me to choose how I want to educate my daughter, Melora Longspear. Well, she has a stutter, so her diplomacy isn't going to be very good. She has actually got decent martial, but uh, it's, it's unlikely she'll be a, a commander in my army. So I think we'll go with uh, good with numbers. So hopefully she can be a good steward in the future or treasurer. She also needs someone to educate her. Who's our best steward? Uh, Eglantine is our best at 15. Is there anyone better? Is there anyone in the Iron Throne that could educate her better in terms of stewardship? Uh, there is D uh, Prince Duran, but then she's probably not going to be trained to be a uh, King's Lander or a Crown Lander. Um, and I, actually, he's got some pretty good traits. I think I'm actually going to go for Prince Duran. Might become Salt Dornish, but as long as we have a son, I'm planning to marry her off anyway. She's not going to be sort of the legacy of my dynasty if I can help it. So we could probably marry her to a Dornish person and get an alliance there. Um, my my lord, his grace King Stannis seemed fit to name Bryce Caron. Okay. House Caron, apparently. Uh, lord Paramount of the Stormlands. He and his sons and his grandson should hold and enjoy this honour until the end of time. There we go. So he's given away the Stormlands to a house that I've never actually heard of before, to be honest. Ah, the rule is in Night Song. Okay, fair enough. Uh, your daily routine involves repeatedly swinging your blade at a training dummy. However, you can only learn so much from fighting an inanimate enemy, and the practice gets dead dreadfully dull after a while. I can't read today, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I could use someone to train with, or no, I don't want to fight my friends. I'll say I could use someone to train with. Try and have a real opponent. I still have my rival as uh, Prince Oberon. Uh, I'm not going to duel him though, because he's a very good fighter in his own right, of course. So we're just waiting for our troops to reinforce, and we're waiting, hopefully, for a son. It's now a tour tournament in Hollard Hall. I shall join that tournament and see if we can win this one. Uh, Sir Cavan wants a reward for his service. 5.8 gold. I feel like he's, he's worth it. He's, he's done well for me so far in terms of marshal. 23 marshal, so he's very good at it. Uh, can we get a new treasurer? No, okay. That's annoying. I might need to look for some better treasurers to gain a bit more money a bit more quickly. We also need a new bodyguard. Do we have anyone that's actually good at fighting? We have Cavan Hook, who is our master at arms. Not the best duelist. He is a trained fighter, though, and he is brave and humble, and he does like us. So we'll go for Sir Cavan as another bodyguard. So we're fighting Renford Rikers. So we're actually fighting our liege at the moment. I mean, wouldn't it be terrible if there was an accident or something? Uh, okay, he managed to hit us first, and he knocks us off straight away. So 21.5 dual skill, two, and he won the joust. That doesn't seem fair. But as I said, it, it is a lot more random than actual duels. I don't even know if the duel skill is the key thing. Um, I'm not quite sure what determines who wins in a duel, or if it is just random. Now, I could try and assassinate uh, Renford Riker, but I don't feel like that's to my advantage, because he passed to his daughter, yeah, uh, one year old. I mean, we be might become regent, but I doubt it. I think probably Lady Felice would become uh, regent instead of me. Lolly Stokeworth died. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh well. <laughs> uh, Lolly Stokeworth is the one who's married to Bronn later in the series. I mean, maybe that's a spoiler? I don't feel like it is a spoiler, to be honest. It's not really a major part of the plot. Uh, but yeah, so... I don't feel like assassinating him is the right thing to do at the moment. I think it's better just to try and build our own power here and try and gain some more troops once we take Birch Hall. How many men? He has 1.16 thousand men. We have... 1.79. So we do have a lot of men ready. Does he have any alliances? No. He has quite a few non-aggression packs, but he's not decided to actually form any alliances, or they don't want to. 
which is a bit weird. So we're just going to hold off for now until we have about 2,000 troops, I think. Probably be a good amount to attack him with. Just so we have some security in case anyone joins him and tries to help him out. We could hold a tournament, but I'm not too bothered at the moment. I want to save money for when we take Duskendale. I'll try to improve, improve it a lot so we can have a nice uh, amount of income and troops. The other advantage, of course, of having a son is we can start to give some of this land away once we have the High Lordship. I mean, we could marry our daughters off to people matrilineally and give them land so it stays in the Longspear family, but alliances are also very useful on this game. Uh, Lord Sander, a great melee, uh, melee in the Northern tradition is to be held in Winterfell. I hereby invite you to attend so you can witness the fighting prowess firsthand. I shall go to Winterfell. Of course I will. I want to see a good, uh, good fight. So Lord Eddard's still ruling in the north. He's had three daughters. Uh, Lady Marissa, of course not canon at all. And Rob. Where's John? Does John not exist in this scenario? I, I guess not, because if it was Robert's Rebellion, um, there's a possibility he, he wasn't existing, basically. Uh, after many hours of intense battle, only Duncan Liddell and Lord Howland Reed remain in the field. They engage in the final duel, which Duncan won after forcing Lord Howland to yield. It's impressive that he managed to do that, considering he's in jail. Did they just, like, cart him out for this particular battle? Not sure why Howland's arrested by Eddard. That seems a bit weird. Uh, our Lord Renford is holding a feast. We shall travel to the feast, try and get involved in the festivities, show our, show our face around court. And just wait for our troops to reinforce. Okay, so we have 2,000 men now, so I think as soon as this feast is over, we'll attack Birch Hall and... Then we'll control most of um, Duskendale. Um, so we'll be in a position to probably take it anyway, but we'll just try and build up slowly. So take Hollard Hall and then take Duskendale. Because, of course, that is his brother in charge of Hollard Hall. So I don't want to take Duskendale and then sort of accept it like that. I, I, I want to make sure that everyone in charge of these lands is connected to me in some way. I saw my mortal enemy as soon as I stepped into Lord Renford's castle. Presence was almost more than I could bear. I, I presume it says his presence. I don't know. Uh, it was more, almost more than I could bear, and I longed to pick up a sword and impale him with it. I can challenge him a duel, or I can say I don't want to spoil the feast. Apparently he's my rival, my mortal enemy for some reason. Not quite sure why. I'll challenge him to a duel anyway. Someone will probably talk his out of it. Lord Renfred... Lord... <laughs> I really can't talk to him. I'm so sorry. Lord Renfred... Renfred. 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 Okay. Committed much gold to his extravagant feast. In particular, I was impressed with a large centerpiece on the day's table. It represented a green lawn surrounded with large peacock feathers and green branches to which were tied violets and other sweet-smelling flowers. In the middle of this was a fortress... Um, in the middle of this, a fortress was placed covered with silver. I'm so bad at reading today. The fortress was hollow and formed a sort of cage in which several live birds were shut up, their tufts and feet being gilt. On its tower which was gilt, the banners of House Riker were placed. How impressive. Spent a lot on this feast, you can tell. So the feast is now over. We gained some prestige for it. Will there be a feast next year? Probably not, because I'll have taken over by then, hopefully. My mother-in-law died. Aw, that's unfortunate. Um, so we're gonna. I think we're going to declare war now, to be honest, because we have 2,009 men, or 2.09 thousand men. He only has 1.29, so... We might as well do it now and kind of get it out of the way. Because then we'll hold most of the High Lordship. So we'll just raise our own men for now. Uh, and we will... Uh, we can't lead it because we're the Marshal. Uh, same thing again. Data routine. Gets boring using a dummy. We'll ask if there's someone who can train with us. In fact, actually, we will raise our Vassal Levies as well. So I'll have to bring them over as well. Just so we have the full amount of men. So there's not going to be any issues with beating them. Uh, one afternoon, your wife comes over to you and begs a private word. She asks that you allow her to take one of her serving girls as her handmaiden. She says that she's become very fond of her and believes she would serve well, and two of them would get along wonderfully. So, if you both get along, then why not? Or we can say she's a peasant and cannot be your handmaiden. Um, I don't see why not. You can have a handmaiden. So, all our troops have now formed under Sir Goodwin uh, and Ricard on the right. I mean, we could lead men, but I have to resign from council, which can't really be bothered. We have enough men to beat this. So we'll be able to catch them before they can run away. Should be an easy victory. There we go. And this should be a rather easy siege. So we'll try and do this as quickly as possible. We will end up wasting a lot of men by assaulting the holding, but we won't need these men for a while until we get the claims 
on Hollard Hall and Duskendale, and we can sort of take some time to build up seven days, and then we can besiege them. So we'll do it now. I think we won. I don't think we did, actually. I think I wasted a lot of men there. So we can march across and beat their army if we want, but I think we might as well wait for the siege. I need to educate my daughter, Ruella. Um, she's got a good diplomacy already, so I'll educate her at court so she could possibly be a good diplomat, and I'll spend highly, as always, try and get the best for them, make them the best characters they can be. So this siege is nearly over, and then we should have won. It should be 100% by then. Unless we have to take Palas as well. I don't think we will, though. I think this should be an easy siege. I mean, they've managed to siege us quite quickly. Okay, so we've managed to take his family hostage as well. We'll enforce our demands. And that's it. We've taken all three bits of land that we needed. And now it's a case of waiting for a claim on Hollard Hall. Uh, so can we ransom these prisoners? We'll just ransom all prisoners and see what we get. Uh... You realise that to become a great fighter, you need to get in better shape. There's a great path in the nearby woods that'd be excellent for running. Let's go running. Why not? So I don't think he actually has the money to ransom any of them. Uh, we'll keep them for now, though. Looks like Renfred wants to have someone educate the Laura Longspear. Well, he's a pretty terrible character, to be honest. Apart from diplomacy, uh, all of his stats are pretty bad, so we're going to decline that. I'm not really bothered if he makes them happy. We're going to be taking his land soon, anyway. Yeah, I don't think he has the money to pay the ransoms. I might just release them anyway and sort of get them out of my court before any problems. In fact, I'll do that now. I know I could keep them and, you know, use them as, as ransom and stuff, but at the same time, the war's over. I don't feel like the need to sort of drag everything out. We might as well just move on from now. Um, I didn't even read that. I just clicked. I'm so sorry. I hope it wasn't anything important. So now we have a good amount of land, a good amount of troops as well. We have 2,000 troops and obviously a lot more to be reinforced. He has 4,000 he can call up and I think 1.8 thousand of those are from Hollard Hall. The only problem we're going to have is that potentially if we go to war with Lord Jeremy, then Renfred will support him. He's actually Roll of Faith, I didn't realise that. Are they both Roll of Faith? No, he's Faith of the Seven. So that's interesting that he is Roll of Faith. Um... That may, might be to our advantage, because his vassals aren't going to like him as much, hopefully. Uh, throughout the day, you've caught yourself grinding your teeth and be being unable to focus on anything for long. Suddenly, you realise why you have been in a bad mood all day. You just can't seem to abide having lazy people in your presence anymore. So we can try and talk to someone about their slothfulness, or we can just ignore it and end up possibly stressed. We'll go for the top option. I think it was my wife, actually. And that might have worked, actually. She might not be slothful anymore, which would be useful for us. Again, probably we could have found a better match for us than Lady Pera, but, you know, she's she's been useful for now. Although we haven't had a son still, which is a bit worrying. Uh, though I thought Sir Morgan to be a more reasonable man, his request to be allowed to do uh, Jonas or Jonas, his rival, was slightly erratic. Sir Morgan claimed to be constantly subject to affronts from his rival and asked for permission to defend his honour. I'll allow the duel. Please don't kill my treasurer. Okay, it looked like they sorted it fairly peacefully. We do actually have more land than we we should really be holding, which is unfortunate, but I've not got any way to give it away safely without losing it. Who's my best diplomat? Florian, who's also got decent learning, so he might be a good tutor. Um, do we have anyone better? Um, we'll see if he has anyone that's really good at diplomacy to educate my daughter. He has Hostetully, who's only 15 again. Uh, Pycelle, who's Got some decent enough traits and very good learning, obviously. Um, but I don't feel like that's the best way to go. I think I might just keep within my court and have... Uh, who was it? Florian, my maester. Do it, let's do that. Have my maester try and educate her. Hopefully she turns out well. If not, we'll marry her off anyway. I mean, do I look for another match? I mean, she wants to have a son as well, and so do we. But for some reason, it's not happening. We'll send her a gift to try and make her like us a bit more. Uh, I've noticed Marshal Sir Cavan's hard work and everyone seems to like him. I'm deciding between having my Marshal heighten the morale of the troops or try and recruit more soldiers. I'm always going to go for more soldiers at this point to try and increase the levy size, get more men recruited so when we need them, they're ready. Aha, finally, okay, we have the claim on Hollard Hall now, so all we need now is the claim on Duskendale. So we'll get that working now. I, I would, you know, try and take Hollard Hall immediately and lower the amount of men he has. But 
first of all, we don't have that many men at the moment. And second of all, I'm still worried that he may, because he's his brother, he may rush to his assistance. So I don't really want to risk that. So we're taking part in another war game. If you haven't watched my series before, once a pop-up has come up a couple of times, I start to skip through it quite quickly, because otherwise we're just spending all our time reading. And since I can't read today, that doesn't sound very fun. We are taking Sir Timon on again. And it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm going to go for the same sort of events. Except this time, my ally, uh, Cavan, wants to focus on taking down one side of the enemy troops quickly. So I will go with what he says, quickly try and defeat the hidden troops. Oh, okay, this is actually different, sorry. So when our troops reach the top of the hill, time smiles at us. He reveals the hidden troops that were deployed on the other side of the hill. So he suggests that we should focus on taking down one of the enemy troops quickly. So let's quickly try to defeat the hidden troops and see if that works. After discovering the small enemy force, it was clear we had the advantage in numbers. With even ground, we managed to whittle down the enemy until finally our team could claim victory. So we gained the trait Strategist, um, which means we get plus two Marshal, plus one Stewardship and more Defence. That sounds good to me. So our Marshal has increased to 25 and we've gained a Lifestyle thing. Also our Stewardship's gone up to eight again. Uh, my wife still doesn't want to have a son. I don't know what's going on here. She has a claim on the Castle of Gull Hall, which doesn't really help us. The Dothraki. The many cows of the Grey Grass Sea have been rallied under the same banner. The leader that managed to unite them all is Harrow. The people of the Grasslands now call their leader Great Cal, and have set their minds not only to ruling on the Dothraki Sea, but to spread throughout the world under the leadership of the Stallion who will mount the world. Something has to be done to stop them. So the Dothraki Sea is rather big at the moment. Of course, that's uh, Vast Dothrak, which they can't take. But he's leading from here and has a massive amount of land. He actually has more land he can probably take quite simply. Uh, it's when he gets to the Freeholds, they're going to have to try and hold him off as best they can. But whether that's going to work or not, we don't know. Sorry about the sun jump cut there. There was a knock on the door, so I had to quickly run down and get it. But we're back now. So again, we're having this event. No one seems to want to train with us, so I'm going to go with no, I don't want to fight my friends because we don't seem to have anyone that wants to train with us anyway. So, kind of our plan now is to try and wait until we have more men and possibly the claim on Duskendale as well and try and take both bits at once at the same time. I feel like that will work out best. Since I came to Duskendale, we've never had a shortage of soldiers reinforcing the troops. We'll send a letter to our liege to tell them about the good work we've been doing. I think I might actually wrap the episode up now though because we have the claim on Holland Hall and we've kind of taken a bit more land so we have made some progress. Um, we're just waiting for that claim on Duskendale and we're waiting to have a son as well which is a bit more worrying that we haven't had a son yet to really carry on the name and the le legacy of Xander Longspear so that's definitely something we have to focus on. We're getting up, up there in terms of age as well, we're nearly 40 now. Our wife is actually ill, okay she's better now. But do we need to look for another bride? That's that's the possibility. Are they going to attack Antlers? There's a there's a Faith of the Seven uprising against Duskendale because of course he is Roller Faith. Yeah, they're besieging my land. How how dare you? Get back here! No, don't you dare run away! How dare you? I'm not standing for that. I'm not standing for them attacking my land. I've had enough of people besieging me when I'm not involved in the war. So we already ended that little uh, uprising there. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to wrap the episode up now, though. On the next episode, we'll be focusing on having a son and trying to get a claim on Duskendale. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. We have made some progress here, a little bit of progress. We've taken Birch Hall. We've got a lot more men now. We've got uh, 2,000, nearly 3,000 men ready to go. So it's going to be exciting when we have those claims and can declare war on Duskendale and try and take them as quickly as possible and become a high lordship and then look elsewhere. I've just noticed as well that Cracklaw Point has actually been made a high lordship, which helps us quite a bit because we can kind of take all of it in one go if we get enough claims. So that'll be the focus once we've taken Duskendale. But for now, as I said, I'm going to wrap this video up now. If you have enjoyed the video, please do feel free to leave a like. It's not compulsory, but it is always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.